Hello my friends and welcome to my afternoon coffee. It's been a rough summer so this morning I slept in and I feel much better sipping, sipping my coffee and talking to you. I often say that if I need to boost my creativity I take inspiration in an older project and try to reinvent it. In this case I took inspiration from two projects with my favorite stamp set because I had already reinvented the first project once before. This time I wanted to make it a Christmas in July project but the time flies so let's call it a Christmas in August project and at the same time declare that from now on I will make summer, fall, Halloween and Christmas project all bundled up because I need to create what makes my heart happy. So the first project was this design team project for All and Create and the stamp set with the hot air balloon and the happy fox by Tracy Evans became an all-time favorite. The second project with the fox stamp set I was partaking in a challenge to make 3 by 3 inch projects but I elected to make a big project that could be divided in 3 by 3 inch squares. But enough about the old, let's dive into these new pages head first using a whole heap of stamps and stencils from All and Create and in this video I also include a short color coloring tutorial where I kind of show you how I approach coloring and why. So coloring, I am new at coloring, I have only been doing it a few years so take what I say with a pinch of salt and above all color in a way where you can be happy and relaxed. I have stamped several poisonettias with a waterproof black ink and for all the flowers I will use four or less of the exact same markers. I'm using my Sig Clean color markers here, three shades of red and one brown plus the colorless blender. I often hear people talking about the scary dark colors but I don't find them scary, I find them often to be necessary but that depends on what kind of result you are wanting and there are no right or wrong way, only what result you want in the end. The already colored flower is colored in a middle way between light and dark That's and that's what I will show you in the first coloring using three red shades. Then we will move on and I will add a brown marker to really deepen the shadows for a darker result. The last bunch of flowers will be colored with only two red markers and we will get a lighter result. All three ways to color is a great way depending on what you want in the end. And for all the coloring I use the colorless blender when needed. So for the first flower I start with a dark bordeaux red and map out my shadows. I add the dark red at the base of each, each petal and wherever a petal shades or overlap another. Then I add my medium red and I just use that color to extend my shadows and get a smooth transition from the darkest to the medium shade. My lightest red is a vibrant red and I do the same as before, extend those shadows and transition into my lightest red. Then I take the colorless blender and drag that vibrant red out and finally fade it out to a light pink. These markers blend beautifully together so I can add all my darkest shadows to all the petals before I move on to adding all my medium red on all my petals and so on. Remember this is the medium road compared to the darkest where I will go next. 
Next, I shade with a reddish brown. You could knock back that red towards brown with a green marker to shade as well. But here I wanted the contrast of moving over to a darker brown. Here I did the same as before, but now with four markers and the colorless blender. So naturally the petals will be darker. Neither of these roads to coloring is better than or lesser than the other. It all depends on what you want to achieve. Here we have the medium flower next to the darker choice and now we can move on to the lightest coloring using only two of the red markers and the colorless blender. You don't have to lose a lot of shadow or contrast here and should you, like I do here, color them all in different shades they would match together because the base combo of colors is the same. I shade in the same way with my darkest red, extend the shadows with my medium red and as the lightest I bring in the colorless blender. And here we have my three flower clusters in the same colors but with different choices while coloring them. Remember, no style is better than the other and I for one will use all of them in today's pages. I color many flowers, leaves and berries in green and blue shades using the colorless blender to fade out my lightest layer a lot. I color and fussy cut a lot of flowers and now we move on to the animals. For them I'm using distress inks in antique linen, scattered straw, wild honey, rusty hinge and vintage photo. I chose the inks because I love those colors on the foxes. I use antique linen and scattered straw for the bunny, shading with them and fading them out with water. For the accessories on the animals like the bow tie, I use the same green and blue sig markers as I used on the flowers. For the foxes I use that favorite combination of vintage photo rusty hinge and a smidge of wild honey, blending them out with water for a smooth result. I am working in my Black Dilutions 8x8 journal and I flip through until I find a blank spread. Then I bring out my blade and a ruler and cut just under half of my page off. I want to attach the cut off part with the next page and for that I'm using Distress Collage Medium and Washi Tape. 
I put collage medium along the edge of both the page and the cut off piece and add the washi as a hinge and I do that on both sides so I get a two page spread that opens up in the middle. So I have one whole page in the middle and two flaps with two sides each. So I cut panels from white sturdy watercolor cardstock and I cut them so they will have a thin black border around each panel. To make these backgrounds I am using pigment powders, I have Nouveau Shimmer powders in blue lilac and ivory, a teal powder from Lindy's and a dark blue from Cosmic Shimmer. I spray with water first and I'm going for a winter sky as I tap out the powder around the edges, the darkest first and lighter towards the center. I am also using Distress Spray Stain in Picket Fence to make sure I get enough white in the center, but the spray is old and clogged so I choose to pour it out and then I add a lot of water to, to activate the powders. I add more powder or water as needed until I'm happy with this panel. Sometimes I use a brush to break up piles of powder and when I need more white I pour more of the white spray stain. For the four side panels I do the same procedure and it's easy to add more powder or more water until the panels look like what I envisioned. To add interest to my background panels I will use this heart stamp by Tracy Evans but it took me a while to get there. I went through all alternatives, shimmer paste, holographic embossing, black glitter embossing and all the while my mind was saying Julia, you know what will work the best, glitter and shimmer is important but deep down you know that black ink and matte doll embossing powder is the right way. So I went with what I already knew. To add to this I didn't know that my camera had shut off so I missed filming a lot of it but I managed, managed to get some of the process on video. To avoid harsh lines while heat embossing I made some masks from copy paper and stamped with VersaFine Clear Nocturne ink over my masks, covered the stamping with WOW's Clear Matte Doll embossing powder and melted with my heat tool. And I did that in a few random places on all panels. So here are all my background panels with that random heat embossing and now I want to add interest to them with inks and a stencil from All and Create. Using Distress Ink in Blueprint Sketch I stenciled in part of that stencil that to me could be snowflakes. I overlap the stenciling with the heat embossing to get clusters of interest that draw the eye in. Next I use the same ink to go around the edges framing my panel and adding drama. To darken that ink frame I use Distress Oxide ink in chipped sapphire and black soot and I go around my edges. When I'm done with the ink I flick little water droplets on the panel and when the water reacts with the ink I get a lighter and more distressed look. And I do the same to all my panels. So, all my panels are done and now it's time to glue each panel onto the black journal, covering both the center page and both flaps.
So the background is finished and I turn my attention to my images. I colored these mouses moving an apple off camera but I wasn't happy with the coloring. So I colored two more mouses and glued them on top of the other ones. Now the time has finally come to glue down all my images. They are many and there will be a lot of gluing. I kept most of the gluing in because I wanted you to see the pages transform. I start by gluing the things I want to be pushed back into the background like flowers and mushrooms and sometimes I cut an image apart to build a taller flower or change things up. It is so lovely to add the poisonettas and get that drama from the red flowers. I am super happy when I get to finally start gluing down my animals and the hot air balloons. I do have those black borders but it doesn't bother me to let some images go over the black borders and I even let that Santa hat stick up from the journal top. I am careful with my journals and either way the point is to create what makes my heart happy. There are no rules or art journal police. I continue with sticking down a bunch of the blue flowers and they really pop against the red. I stick down my mouse hot air balloon and of course I give it a Santa hat as well. Sometimes some images disappear into the busy background, like the mouses with their apple. But I like looking at my pages and seeing something new in every corner. This little happy fox is my favorite image and when the fox is glued down I start adding hearts that the mouses and later the fox give out from their hot air balloons.
For a sentiment I chose a simple Merry Christmas from one set and Quirky from another and Heat Emboss Merry Quirky Christmas in white on black cardstock and I also glued down a whole heap of birds all over these pages. The last detail on these pages is to use glossy accents to get a glossy domed effect on some details, like the hearts coming from the balloons, the banner on one balloon, the apple the mouses are moving and the sentiment. And now, these mixed media all and create Christmas pages are finished. Thank you so so much for spending some crafty time with me. Until the next time. Happy crafting!